So the most important part of short-term trading is understanding what you should be looking at on a daily basis. In this video, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about making your own watch list and understanding what you should be focusing on throughout the session. The first tip, guys, I'm going to start this off, is right here on my screen right now. There it is. And we could maybe finish right now. But this is uh, the TraderTV.live watch list. We send it out every single day watchlist.tradertv.live to get that content absolutely F-R-E-E -E free. Uh, let's break down though how we come up with this list on a daily basis. Uh, we talk all the time about trying to look at stocks that have some sort of reason why they are moving, guys. 100%. Like at the end of the day, if you have nothing to trade, it's not like you're going to make any money. You've got to start somewhere. And uh, for us, that is stocks that are anticip anticipating good movement. So volume, volatility, you want an opportunity to make that cash. So the first thing you can always think about is, um, has the stock already moved? And this is where looking at things like uh, screeners will come into play here uh, for cent movers. Now, I can, look, I'll throw a couple of examples out here because we happen to, uh, happen to have them, investing.com and market chameleon. There's a million of these out here. But you're looking at some lists that will be generated, especially in the pre-market. This is when you're going to want to look. And then you'll have things like the percent change. So maybe something gets moved a lot, up 50%. Uh, depending on the strategy you're looking for. Myself, I'm, I, I trade a lot of pullback trades, so I, I know if I'm looking to find a stock that is gapped up and I can find a retracement, I need it to have gapped up in the first place. So I'm looking for those percent movers. The second thing we look for is volume. If a, if a, share, if a stock is up 100% and it's trading 100 shares, who cares? Uh, but if it's done volume in the pre-market, that's going to matter. So you want to look at that actual volume. Sometimes the volume leaders can be important, guys. The other thing that you want to consider is going to be news is it earnings season right earnings is a good catalyst is there stock specific news in this particular case in this in the time that we're making this video there's the meme stocks that are moving around so does it fall into that category i was trading wish today it was on my list because i have a list of meme stocks or short stocks that are key levels i want to put in there so all of these things are factors that you have to be able to uh, utilize in terms of generating that list so the next thing you got to think about is once you put that all out there, um, what is your own specific trading style? Now, I've already said that a lot of times I will look for uh, shorting off of high levels. So you've got to think about do these stocks have the setups that you want? If it gapped up, does it have a level that I'm interested in? Does it have volume? If a stock has earnings or had an earnings report, is there actual volume in the pre-market? If it is not traded, if you don't see volume spikes in the pre-market or you don't have good volume the day before, it might not be that interesting to you. So you've got to consider all of these factors in addition to your own personal trading style. If I'm a, tra if I'm a breakout trader uh, and the stock is hovering on the lows and there's no key offers to break when I pull up that chart, do I need to add it to my list? Maybe not. So it's not just about noting every single list, every single stock that's up 10, 50 percent or down 15 percent or has earnings or has uh, you know some kind of bankruptcy news. There has to be levels that you can work off of, and it has to fit with your overall trading style as well, Sean. A hundred percent. I think that the trading style is really what's most important. Neil and I will trade. You know, we'll sit here on the on the same trading floor using the same platform, looking at the same watch lists, but having some different ideas and understand that whatever your your, your trading style is, try to find symbols that will match. And I think that's you know, I've I've had a lot of luck here recently, really focusing down my watch list. And I think that's another tip is that you don't need to have tons of names on your watch list. I actually do something now called uh, the stick note that's been really really popular and all it is is just a post-it note and what i do is i just write down a, and you can find this at trader tv sean on twitter uh just follow any of us at, at trader tv as well for the twitter accounts amc wish and again this is just from a few days ago a lot of these names off here with a couple key notes right watch for different support levels watch for different breaks right little notes like this 17 percent short right understand that this is breaking this is a new name look for reopen plays here and we circle this is what i do too and i think this has uh, helped me a lot as well is give little stars so this palantir those of you that know the show know that i like to trade palantir so star out certain levels right and then watch certain levels so that's what i try to do here with the sticky note and just give ideas and again they're just ideas right you're not going to have every single stock in every single market listed on a list like this. You're just going to look for names that you've had some success on. And that brings me to something that I've just put together here. This is a triple sticky note. And the reason why I'm showing you this is, I don't know if you can see this, but there's very 
very similar names on all of these notes. And what I do is actually keep them beside me during training. So even though it's a new day, I may want to look back and say, what was on my watch list from yesterday? You know, and maybe I don't have Coinbase on it today, but did I have it on yesterday? And if I did, what levels were I looking at? So a lot of the time you want to go back a couple days and say, oh yeah, I remember this name. This is a name that was on my watch list. It didn't trigger a certain level, but today it's closer to that level. So definitely look back at your watch list as well. Don't just look at current day. Maybe go back a couple days and revisit some of those names that you may have forgotten. All right. So from a very basic level, we understand, you know, as short-term traders, we need to be capitalizing on movement. Stocks that have some sort of reason as to why they are moving right. provide us with those opportunities. So. Uh, thinking along those lines, guys, once we have, as Sean, you were saying, you know, that big kind of maybe 10, 12, 15 symbol list, how do we then really narrow it down and get to what we want to look at when we get to 930? This is the key thing. Every trader is going to be different, right? So uh, I can tell you, and I, and I reference stocks that gap up and looking for fade trades or looking for uh, uh, selling near a defined level or just selling any kind of a retracement. The first thing I'm always going to do is when you, when you find the stock that's on your list, maybe it has got good pre-market volume, it's got the gap up, MTP was that particular case on this day today, uh, I'm going to write that name down on my iPad. And, you know, uh, it, it goes on the list, but it doesn't mean that I think there's going to be an actionable trade there. Uh, so what will happen is if it's a really low float, I'll put a note that it has a really low float or a short interest that's too big. Uh, I'll make that note as well. But I go to the higher time frame. I go to like a daily chart usually. And then a lot of times if I'm going to look at partic particular failures, is there an actionable level on the daily chart? Now here it was pressing into a high at 380. Uh, so I go to the daily, I go back into my chart, and this would have been in the morning when I sat down. Uh, is it failing off of a level like that? Okay, so it gets a bit of a check mark. At that particular point, I'll then put that, that level that I was finding on the daily chart next to that symbol. Now, for me, that signals there could be that opening setup trade where a failure off of that, either that daily chart high or the pre-market high, which is slightly lower than it, that becomes an actionable trade. So because I've done that, it indicates to me there's a potential trade there. Otherwise, I leave it blank. Now, it's still going to be on my list because it's doing movement. And then when I review it, maybe there's something there the next day. But if I don't put a number next to it, there is no setup for that morning trade. So you have to go to the higher time frame. You understand how your particular trading strategy will be. And then once I've done that, make a note uh, as to any other key levels that come into play so that when you revisit it, as Sean mentioned the next day, you can start looking at some of those significant levels. Like, you know, here today, I'm simply noticing when I shorted a break down here, it couldn't get past 295. And there was a huge flush out uh, at 295, three even. So that could be a key level for tomorrow. That's the kind of note that I would add so that you're not just throwing out things that worked for you on that present day. Always revisit it. It's the same thing we tell our viewers with our watch list. Make sure you go back and see something on Monday might still be in play on Tuesday or Thursday as a day trader knows you want to stick to the hot names. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what we just talked about there uh, as well. Go back a couple days. And I just want to show you, uh, you asked about preparation of the watches and, and how you might trade it. Um, today we have here, you can see AMC hold off 52, yesterday's bottom. And then I just have, you know, my chart here. And again, you know, as AMC is coming into 52 here, even in the pre-market, right, we're defending this 52 level of which we get a great little bottom wick here of 51.60 and then bang, right to the upside. We only take a $4 win. Uh, it could have been a lot more. You know, I feel bad kind of showing this. But it, it just goes back to the question of, you know, when do you use your watch list? For me, I generally will be putting down levels that I'm looking for early in the trading day, right? So it's not, you could almost make a brand new watch list, Brendan, like afternoon, you know, like these are for morning trades as you can analyze what the market's doing, what your stock's been doing, how pre-market's been trading. And then as the day goes on, you sure, you may want to revisit some of the levels that were on here, but again, new levels and new opportunities are created. So I don't think it's a horrible idea to revisit your watch list and perhaps add some new names and some new levels on there near the noon hour. And as we gain experience and understand a little bit better what works for us as individual traders, you'll come to an understanding of, you know, what type of trade you're looking for. So not only just a symbol because it's moving, because it has news, but then you bring it down another level and say, okay, what exactly am I looking for uh, for an entry or for that trade setup, as, as Sean was explaining there. But lots of key stuff there, guys. Make sure you keep uh, watch lists.
day to day to day to day because something that works today could also be available to you tomorrow and two days down the road. That is uh, how you put together your morning watch list. Here's Valeria. Hey guys, thank you for this helpful information. Dear viewers, please subscribe to this channel to see more great videos.